Hello, I'm Jane Fonda, and this is A&M Studios in Hollywood, California. On the evening of January 28th, along with several other people, I was fortunate to be here and to witness an extraordinary event. 45 of the most remarkable singers in American popular music had come together to record a special song and make a special commitment. For many of us watching that night, part of the thrill was seeing so many diverse artists working together so compatibly, with serious purpose, but with a sense of humor and spontaneous spirit. After all, how often have any of us had a chance to see genuine legends like Ray Charles, Bob Dylan, Michael Jackson, Lionel Richie, Diana Ross, Tina Turner, Bruce Springsteen, Willie Nelson, oh, and so many more, all in the same room, sharing harmonies, telling jokes, and even shedding tears. Frankly, it was a bit like a dream. The vision of an artist community coming together, declaring that an urgent common concern was more important to them than musical differences or individual renown. It was a dream too good not to share. And so in the next hour, we would like to give you a glimpse of some of the more enduring moments of that memorable evening. A few days before the actual historic session, another musical meeting took place. This time at Lion Share Studios with Quincy Jones, Michael Jackson, Lionel Richie, and Stevie Wonder all present. By the end of the session, it was clear that the song not only had shape and substance, but also had enough heart and soul to inspire the kind of affinity necessary to bind together so many diverse singers. In fact, there was a spirit of cooperation, amiability, and exhilaration born at this session that would eventually carry over to the entire USA for Africa project. Hello? Hello? How you doing, Louis? Man, are you kidding? <laughs> this is great. Well, Stevie and Michael and Lionel are here. So we're just getting ready to cut the track now. We're getting ready to cut the basic now. The next night, Michael and Lionel recorded a final rough version of the vocals, while drummer John Robinson, bassist Lewis Johnson, and pianist Greg Fillingaines laid down some basic rhythm tracks. Then Quincy and engineer Humberto Gatica did a mix of the song and sent tapes of it to the other artists who were invited to lend their voices to the project. Finally, it was the night of Monday, January 28th. Trucks began arriving here at the A&M lot shortly after dark. Over 150 technicians and crew members began assembling a complex audio and video network of equipment. Nobody was receiving payment for their effort or materials. In fact, even the videotape you're now watching was contributed, and there was more than 45 hours worth of it used. By 8.30, A&M Studios had been transformed into the temporary capital of American popular music. Michael Jackson bypassed the American Music Awards to come in by himself and record one final guide vocal that Quincy could use as a map for the song's chorus parts. Then, a little after 9 p.m., 
the other singers and their guests began arriving. Many, like Cindy Lauper and Tina Turner and Lionel Richie, were coming straight from the American Music Awards, where Tina and Cindy had performed and Lionel had hosted. People who had been competitors only a few hours before were now meeting as partners in deliverance. Others, like Daryl Hall, John Oates, Paul Simon, Billy Joel, and Bruce Springsteen, had flown in that same day. I'll be here. I guess this is where they leave me stay. When I saw those faces come in the studio that night after the American Music Awards, and they just were checking in one by one, uh, Ray Charles, and it just on and on, and I started to feel that everybody was on the case, and they weren't involved, and the egos, and that's one of the key words we had that night was check your ego at the door. You saw artists that had just met for the evening hugging each other or comforting each other. I will tell you, though, no one who was intimidated. To walk into their midst and to feel an instant sense of camaraderie, an instant sense of belonging, an instant sense of oneness is a, is a very, very unusual experience. Hold it, everybody, please. First, I would like you to meet Bob Geldof, who it's it, really the inspiration for this whole thing. This thing could show. He just came back from Ethiopia, and he'd like to talk to you. Oh, and would I? <laughs> um, well, maybe to put you in the mood of the song you're about to sing, which hopefully will save millions of lives, I think it's best to remember that the price of a life this year is a piece of plastic seven inches wide with a hole in the middle. And that, I think, is an indictment of us. And I think what's happening in Africa is a crime of historical proportions. And the crime is that the Western world has got billions of tons of grain bursting in its silos, and we're not releasing it to people who are dying of hunger. And I don't know if we in particular can conceive of nothing, but nothing is not having the cardboard box to sleep under a minus 10 degrees. Nothing is not having any drink to get drunk on, not having water. And you walk into one of the corrugated iron huts and you see meningitis and malaria and typhoid buzzing around in the air and you see dead bodies lying side by side with the live ones, and on a good day, you can only see 120 people die slowly in front of you. And some of the camps, you see 15 bags of flour for 27 and a half thousand people. And it's that that we're here for. And I don't want to bring anybody down, but maybe it's the best way of making what you really feel, why you're really here tonight, come out through this song. So thanks a lot, everybody, and let's hope Thank it works. You. We're going to start out to, uh, number one, I'd like to just let, let everybody know that the names down here are for solos. We're going to do the ensembles first and to get all the stacking and all that carpentry out of the way. So if it's too high for anybody, they can just rest on this stack and then we'll come back anyway. and put it away, okay? So we'll play, we'll play, we'll make a playback and then we'll start, we'll start chopping wood, okay? Can I hear it, Hums? Let's put it on the tape. We are the world. <laughs> 
<laughs> the highest point was conducting that choir, because there were some moments in that chorus where I had goosebumps, that's my truth box, and the goosebumps were up all night long. Whichever one feels good to you. Which one feels better or brighter? Brighter is the one everybody's leaning to, right? Can make me a change. No, I think it should be brighter. I feel like everyone was singing brighter. This is brighter? It's a little better. Brighter. Yeah, that's going to be brighter now. A better has to have a bite. I don't want to open a can of one. Stay with brighter. So we don't ever sing this? I see any. No, no better. It's brighter. It's true. We make a brighter day. It's true we make a brighter day, just you and me, instead of better. Everybody say brighter, because that's what we're saying anyway. Can we hear about four bars without but without the track? Acapulco. One. Two, when three. you hear it on the radio, We Are the World sounds like one seamless flowing performance. But working on it in the studio was like making a jigsaw puzzle, part by part, including some pieces that finally didn't fit, like this experimental chorus by Michael. We are the world, Shala, we are the children, Charlene. Well, as usual, Michael was a real pro, and he worked so well with all the other artists. The chemistry was great, man. sings great. Everybody has a wonderful ear. Everyone caught on real fast. It's great to watch Quincy. I've never been in the studio with him, and he's a master, so that was a real thrill. All the people that are here are ultra in their own right, and, and of course, I'm just so happy to get to see them. So let's start giving. You know, and I close my eyes and try to listen to the voices behind me, and I turn around and look at their faces, and I just love it. It's something out of a dream. To see all of that energy together, it's uh, what I've always wanted to see. It's a kind of energy that, that really can change the world. It's incredible. All in all, Quincy and the group worked for about four hours that night until nearly 2 a.m., recording all the necessary parts to complete the song's tightly woven chorus. Just before the chorus broke up, there was this spontaneous tribute to Harry Belafonte. Yeah. 
cover, folks. All right, uh, I will give you five minutes, okay? Get yourself together. In addition to the meticulous recording of the song, there were some other matters the artists had to attend to that evening, including a 2.30 a.m. photo session for a 12-page article which ran in the April issue of Life, detailing the evening's events. 2.30 in the morning may not be the best hour for many of us, but there was a sense of fellowship in the studio that night that seemed to fuel everybody's spirit and stamina. Mass hysteria broke out because everybody wanted everybody else's autograph and realized that there was a room of everybody being fans of everybody else. Everyone wanted a memento that we could all keep ourselves, and we had the sheet music and had all the other artists sign it. And I don't think there was one out there that didn't get everyone to sign it. During the evening, all of the artists signed 100 USA for Africa posters. Later, these posters would be sold with the money going to the project's famine relief fund. I'm just going to move around till I get a line I like. <laughs> then at 3 a.m., it was time to start the rehearsals for the montage of 21 lead vocals and duet and harmony parts that would give the song its unique character and flow. While Quincy read over the various parts with most singers, often showing them the precise phrasing he wanted, others worked their parts out in pairs. Stevie Wonder and Ray Charles teamed together, for example, reading their lines with the use of an electronic Braille machine. That's yours. Let's see how bad I That's his. Yeah, and you. And if you just believe, there's no way we can fall. But if you just believe, there's no way we can fall. Hello. Hello. Yes. 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 Can I go now? Oh, no. <laughs> we are the world. We are the world. The exact order of the vocals and the job of deciding who would sing solos and who wouldn't and how to match up so many dissimilar voices had been made a couple of days earlier by Lionel, Quincy, and Quincy's associate producer and vocal arranger, Tom Baylor. being individuals. We were a family so strong, so committed to something that it was frightening. By four in the morning, everybody felt comfortable with their parts. In fact, everybody seemed quite invigorated. But just prior to the recording of the solos, something happened to remind all of us of the underlying serious purpose of the event. Stevie Wonder brought two guests into the studio two Ethiopian women who had seen famine spreading across their homeland. As one of these women spoke to the artists, it was as if the reality of the tragedy in Africa had just come closer to home in an unforgettable way. You need some Ethiopian. Okay. <laughs> In English, on behalf of my country, we thank you for all you have done. Thank you very much.
what we do is we have mics in front of us, but what we'll do is you lean in on your part. And then when your part, you know, when the other person comes in, when you do it with someone, whatever the case is, when your part comes up, lean in. Don't sing back here. You sing back here, we'll never know your voice. Step in or lean. So, no, come on in. You know, even like, though they have like, your name like back here. Things. You like follow? Regular, yeah. this, is, this is real recording. It's just the, the names are back there, but the mics are up here. Come to the microphone. Testing, one, two. Let me know when you're ready. 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 Are they ready? There comes a time when we heed it. Wait a minute. We gotta stop making noise during takes, please. Queen <clears> thing. <throat> There comes a time when we heed a certain call, when the world must come together as one. There are people dying. Oh, and it's time we lend a hand to life, the greatest gift of all. We can't go on. Pretending day by day that someone, somewhere, said it will change. We are all a part of God's great big family. And the truth, you know love is all we need. you send them your heart so they know that someone cares and their lives will be stronger and free as God has shown us by turning stone to bread and so we all must lend a helping hand we are the world we are children we are the ones to make a brighter day so let's start giving oh there's a choice we're making we're saving our own lives it's true we make a better day just you and me Yeah. <laughs> 
Haiti. 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 Time of the morning where we must be as accurate as possible. Here we go. There comes a time when we heed a certain call. After maybe only a half a dozen takes, the main sequence of solo vocals was finished. Now, there were only a few fill in items left. Bob wanted to be a part of this because there were people dying, and he made his fame and his fortune on public awareness. That's what he's known for. So for him to be in that room was ever so fitting. And I saw the real reason why he is Bob Dylan. And I was probably one of the hardest working cats I've ever met before in my life. I kept waiting for him to get tired and sit down and rest. He kept saying, want me to do it again? We are the world. We are the children. We are the ones who make a brighter day. So let's start giving. There's a choice we're making. Yeah, we're saving our own lives. It's true, we'll make a better day, just you and me. I think any time you know, somebody asks you to take it one night at a time, keep people from starving to death someplace, it's, it's pretty hard just, you know, you can't say no. So let's start giving. The night session was finished. Daylight had come and it was time to go home. The session may have been over, but the work was hardly done. In fact, the most crucial part of the task, the assembling of all the various parts, sequences, and solos, pulling all of these complex elements into one cohesive package that would play seamlessly was still to be done. That work was begun a few days later here at Lion Share Studio. Here, engineer Humberto Gatica and Quincy Jones spent several long days weaving the various threads into a final effective blend. To deepen the song's soulfulness, Quincy brought a handful of singers back into the studio, including Ray Charles, the man who had virtually invented soul music over 30 years ago. Are you saying wheel or we? we, we it comes out like we. Well, well, there, there, it, it's yeah. true, we, we make okay. a better day. Okay, I just want to make sure yeah. I'm clear with you there. Day. It's true, we make a better day. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
said, hello, Howard. <laughs> I give to you, okay. and we keep this here in case I have to write, uh, write anything else. Okay. Yeah, we can go down so you show me what you want now and where you want that babe, and then that's all you have to do. Okay. Go. One shot through. We are out of world. If every word that you want to use a professional on, in the music business is Ray Charles. I call him the one-take genius. Ray Charles, when he, when he opens his mouth, you know it's a standard. And when he puts his hands on the keyboards, what else do you want him to do? For me, I think it is a great opportunity, a wonderful chance to participate and contribute something to a wonderful cause. And I'm honored just to be asked to be a part of it. Finally, Quincy brought in James Ingram. We are the world! We are the children! We are the one! That make a brighter day, so let's start giving. Spit flying everywhere. <laughs> we are the world. We are the children. We are the ones who make a brighter day, so let's start giving. I messed up. I messed up. I messed up. Hey, everybody in the audience, I messed up. Hey, can you dig it? There's another way we use, but we don't say that on the radio. <laughs> but I messed up. We are the world. Maybe it really is that we have to be kind of the voice for the people through our song to really help those people that have lost their perspectives on what life is about. The recording of We Are the World was quite an event. Not merely a glorious star-studded evening, but possibly one of the most idealistic occasions in pop music history. In that way, it was also a measurement of just how much pop music has grown in recent years and how many of its best artists feel responsible to the world around them. But in many ways, what happened that night was just a start. In the weeks following the We Are The World sessions, several other groups of artists, including Canadian, Latin American, gospel, and African pop stars, recorded similar benefit singles for the relief of hunger in Africa and other parts of the world. Perhaps the most moving response to USA for Africa took place on the morning of April 5th, Good Friday, when over 8,000 radio stations around the globe played We Are the World at the same time. It was an utterly unprecedented event that reached and affected millions of people of all races and all beliefs. But it's important to point out that we aren't just talking about worldwide popularity or massive record sales here. 
When 8,000 radio stations play this song at the same hour, it means that the world is momentarily a neighborhood of concern, coming together to save some hungry children. And when you or I buy this record, We Are the World, that concern becomes a concrete action. The money from the record sales and this program goes to work effectively and quickly, addressing not just immediate needs of hunger, but also the long-term matter of self-sufficiency, so that the trend of famine in these countries can be reversed and brought under control by those who are the most affected. This means that we can save real lives, give real people a chance to find their own strength again, and to live without the awful, ever-present fear of starvation. The poet John Donne once said, any man's death diminishes me because I am involved in mankind. But today, in the words of Michael Jackson and Lionel Richie, a pop song says, there's a choice we're making. We're saving our own lives. The message is much the same. If we're involved in mankind, we can't look away from what's happening in Africa because if we do, we are gradually killing our conscience. And that might be the most terrible death of all. It's so nice to be able to see this caliber of talent get together for this, you know, what is really a very tragic reason. It's a shame it takes something like this to put this group together, but it's nice to see and know that when it's all said and done, these people do respond. I think it's a great thing. I think that um, artists should, should definitely do something positive like this. That's why I'm here. When they called and asked for this, this was something that I really, it's very close to me because I have been following it and I was, I was determined to do my, uh, my little bit. I got a feeling that we're creating uh, a shift in what's going on in the world today about helping other people. It's compassion, it's real new, and it's wonderful, it's a good feeling. I was happy they included me, really. If this can be almost seen as a symbol to, to, for people to just begin to recognize, you know, and look around them a little bit, um, I think, you know, we'll all be better off. People, you know, usually unless something immediately touches somebody, they, they, people don't, they don't react to it. And, uh, they, you know, I think that, that when you get all these people together like this, you know, just saying, well, you know, don't turn away, you know, don't, don't, uh, it's hard, it's hard to not, not to turn away. That's what everybody here is trying to say tonight. The money will really get to go where it's supposed to go, and it's uh, got so much good energy behind it. Amen. And uh, so many uh, good, talented people uh, lending their names to the, to the whole idea that it's just got to work. Once anybody is involved in something like this, once you've tasted this, you can be sure that everybody will have a lifetime commitment to just doing this for the rest of their lives. When something like this comes along to, uh, you know, that, that allows everyone to, to, to participate and feel that they're making a contribution. You, you, you rush to do it because otherwise you feel that you're just a witness to uh, just a tragedy. I do believe that uh, what we have done is that we're taking it one at a time. And out of this experience, we may be able to save you know, a few thousand lives. And I think that's, what we, that's how we have to focus on it, one at a time. Catch a child, catch a woman, catch an old person catch a young man just do it people are basically real good I think that a lot of times you got to show them the way somebody some individual has to take action Bob took action I took action Harry Belafonte took action Lionel took action Michael Jackson took action um, we all um, basically did something I'm appealing to you to get involved I don't want anyone to get the hunger program out of your mind until the hunger stops, until babies stop dying, until communities stop dying, till people stop dying from hunger. They're gonna need your help. Anything you can do, if you have any feeling in your heart at all about human life, and the celebration of life. Give of yourselves. Give what you can. There are people dying.
comes a time when we heed a certain call, when the world must come together as one. There are people dying. Oh, when it's time to lend a hand to life, the greatest gift of all. We can go on pretending day by day that someone, somewhere, will soon make a change. We all a part of. God's great big family and the truth, you know, love is all we need. We are the world, we are the children, we are the ones who make a brighter day. So let's start giving. There's a choice we're making, we're saving our own lives. It's true. Make a better day, just you and me. Well, send them your heart, so they know that someone cares, and their lives will be stronger and free. As God has shown us, by turning stone to bread, and so we all. Must lend a helping hand.